Hello and welcome to the Goon Until back again with you guys for another show for another episode of our Raw Reaction series and specifically the Arsenal Transfer Show in which we keep you guys all up to date with all the latest Arsenal transfer information and try to make some sense of the chaos that we find ourselves delving into every single day. We've got some new names to talk about, we've got some interesting departures to mention as well but first of all I hope that you're well, I hope you're good in the chat box this morning and if you are indeed watching on playback then I hope you're leaving a comment to let us know what your thoughts are around today's transfer activity and if you are enjoying the series please do make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on you can also help the channel by joining up as a member and you get lots of exclusive access to stuff as well without further ado though let's talk about of course your opportunity to vote for us at the FCAs. If you haven't already, and I know that plenty of you have, and thank you ever so much to everyone that has already voted. But all you need to do to go and vote is to tweet. I am voting for at the Guna Talk TV in at the underscore FCAs for hashtag best club creator. If you don't have Twitter, there is information in the description about how you can vote for us. You just need to go to their website and uh, vote there. Or you think you can even do it on Instagram now as well, actually. Follow the instructions on their Instagram page and you'll be able to find out how to do that as well. Well, anyway, let's move on to our first story of the day. Anyway, one of the things I have been noticing is when I look, probably I watch these back just so I can put in the timestamps for the shows, and I say the words, let's move on <laughs> way too much. I need to come up with some different superlatives about how I'm going to change over these slides. <laughs> so notice that. We're going to try our best. Anyway, we have seen two departures from Arsenal in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, they aren't particularly exciting ones, and they certainly are ones that are going to get Arsenal a lot of money, but they're still interesting, and we do need to, of course, discuss them. One is in particular quite interesting. Firstly, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see Ilyev, the 26-year-old goalkeeper that has joined Slovakian side, I believe, SKF Seret, um, who I know nothing about, as you can probably imagine. Ilyev's an interesting one. Uh, he's 26 years of age. It's quite old for a keeper still to be, as well, they deem him still part of the academy. He certainly was tweeted out from, from the academy account about his departure. He is one of those that as soon as his contract expires, will be leaving the club. There won't be an extension. It would be shocking to see that happen. But he's left on loan once again to SKF uh, Severed uh, and will join them for the rest of the season. Uh, and then the more interesting one is on the guy on the left, which you may already be well aware of who that is. That's Nikolai Moller, our young 19-year-old Swedish striker that's been doing very well with the under-23 since arriving from Malmo in the summer of 2020. He is now officially left on loan to Victoria Köln and will join the German third division club next season. If you have been watching the channel for a while that you know that we've been trying to do kind of these uh, loan reports, I am in the process of trying to find a German third tier expert. So as you can imagine, it's been quite a tricky ordeal, um, but uh, we will continue our search. So if you are in the know, but anyone that's really into their German third tier football, then please don't hesitate to send me a DM over at the Green and Talk TV because it is proving quite a challenge, as you can imagine. Moving then on to what has actually been said about Nikolai Moller and Marcus Stigman, who is the manager of Victoria Con, said Nikolai Moller is a very talented player. He is tall and has a strong physique paired with good technique. I am convinced that he fits into our team very well. He is a young player who has great developmental potential and wants to take the next steps with us. And it's going to be intriguing because I think it's a good loan. Move into an English league wouldn't would have really kind of mainly improved upon his physicality. But if you go into the German tiers below, you're adding to your technicality. He's already a physical player. He's already very tall. And I think this will be a good move for him to guarantee him plenty of minutes. And we will be keeping a keen eye on how Nikolai Moller is getting on over in Germany next season. Moving on to another possible out, and we talk about Alexandre Lacazette, our French striker who has been linked with a move away in the past, and supposedly with Arsenal's interest in strikers such as Tammy Abraham, could yet leave the club once again. I say once again for the first time, of course, but the club that are renewing their interest in Lacazette is, of course... Um, <laughs> is Atletico Madrid. I laugh because it just doesn't seem that it just seems like I'm talking about the same stories I talked about not only last year, but the year before that and the year before that because Atletico Madrid are just perpetually linked with Alexander Lacazette. It's an easy link to make. The link comes from Italy, which I always have my reservations about. As soon as you see kind of a link um, between... Uh, a foreign media that's not of the nation of the two interested parties 
I mean, and even the nat nationality of the player, you've got a guy playing in the English league who's French being linked with a Spanish club and it's an Italian report that's linking him with the move. That makes me question things. If, if it was like Locatelli or someone based in Italy or an Italian player, I'd give it more credibility. But the Italian media anyway can be very questionable. But when an Italian source is talking about a French player moving from an English club to a Spanish club, you know, it, it's a red flag in my mind. But who knows? We may see it happen. Arsenal have, of course, said that supposedly there is a £15 million uh, value on his head. I'm not sure if I'd... <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd let him go for that to bring in Tammy Abraham for 40 million. I think it's probably better to just give him a one year extension and then reassess the striker situation next season. But, you know, stranger things have happened and uh, fingers crossed Arsenal can uh, <laughs> do the right thing, which is always a big question. Moving on to Joe Willock now, and specifically the fact that Newcastle are indeed looking at possible alternatives. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. They said they're looking at Conor Gallagher, and we said they were looking at Ross Barkley. Well, they're also supposedly pushing for a player that isn't in the same mould as uh, Joe Willock, Axel Tuinzebi from Manchester United. Now, it isn't specifically related to the position, but it is related in regards to finances. Newcastle don't have a lot of money to spend this summer. And so if they push to try and sign a player like Tuan Zaber that's going to cost them a fair chunk, then that will eat into their transfer market kind of capacity. If it is just a loan for Tuan Zaber, then of course that does open up the opportunity for Willock still to happen. And they also have put forward the idea of Willock being... Uh, brought in on yet another loan deal rather than a permanent deal. But they still very much want Joe Willock and Steve Bruce continually keeps talking about Joe Willock. So it's now very much up to Arsenal about what they do. But it seems like this has not been resolved as of yet and Joe Willock is none the wiser about his own Arsenal future. Moving now to the possible ins and Juventus have had a bid rejected by Sassuolo officially now for Manuel Locatelli, the man that has been linked, of course, with a move to Arsenal, a player that Arsenal are supposedly very willing to meet the 40 million euro demands of the Italian club. But the player, as we know, is still very much hoping and waiting for a move to Juventus to materialise. Sassuolo are apparently willing to accept kind of a loan with a obligation to buy, but yet to meet Juve's kind of area where they want to pay the money. And, and that's going to be an issue. But what's for me, the biggest thing about this story is that if Arsenal are indeed interested still and they're trying to sign Locatelli, just stop. I know it sounds silly because he's a good player, but there's two things to this. One, the player desperately wants to move to Juve. He's always got his eye on Juve and it looks like that's eventually, wherever he goes next, is he will end up eventually at Juventus. Secondly, we need to be signing players that want to come to the club and we need to sign players that have got their full attention, full focus on Arsenal and also... €40 million, Euros, I think, is a very good deal for Locatelli. It would be worth it. But let's not wait around to, to have this deal ultimately slip through our fingers, which, which is, it will happen. It's, I'm almost certain that it will happen. So move on, find another target, get the deal done. It's a really important position, and we need to get it sorted before the start of the window. The, the season. Um, now, this is an interesting player because this is a report that came out yesterday exclusively from The Sun. So, you know, take it as you will. Um, but Machoe Jallo uh, from Passos de Falea, um, the Portuguese side playing in the top tier of Portuguese football, 18-year-old winger, linked with only a million pound move to Arsenal. Now, I know nothing absolutely nothing. I'd be lying to you if I said I knew anything about Matchway Jallo. And for that reason, there is only one thing that we can do. And uh, we will be going to do a tactical breakdown on Matchway Jallo because um, I'm interested about it. It does. It's, an, it's one of those stories where it's, it's completely out of the blue and it's of a level that you think, yeah, there, 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 there's probably something in this. So I think it's probably worth us looking into match or jello a little bit more and so hopefully a little bit later on today you're going to get a tactical breakdown on on who match or jello actually is with an expert who has written extensively about him already so make sure you stay tuned to the channel to get that content so there you go um let's move on to the final part of the show which of course getting your thoughts and your feelings in the chat box as we have completed all of the news for today it is a very quiet period of the window for arsenal and in general there's not lots going on right now 
um, which is surprising considering we're less than three weeks away from the start of the Premier League season. But, you know, maybe things will kick off in a couple of weeks' time. And you can expect with the little amount of money that's floating around because of the pandemic, we're in a situation where a lot of teams, I think, are going to wait to the end of the window to try and pick up as many bargains as feasibly possible. Um, Drew says, which country do you think is the most reliable for transfer news? It's a good question, Drew. And the answer is it's almost impossible to tell you which outright country because you've got nations like Italy that have got some very well-known and very well-respected journalists. And you've got some outlets out there that aren't necessarily so well respected. You've got it in Spain. There are some very well respected journalists that work on Spanish football. And there are outlets that aren't so reliable on Spanish football because they have their own agendas being linked to specific clubs. And then in England, we've obviously got some very, very reliable people. Your Ornsteins, your Wheatleys, your Charles Watts, etc. Um but then you have outlets that you know aren't very reliable too. So it's almost impossible for me to say, Drew, that there is a country that has out and out the most reliable sources for arsenal always look to the uk based journalists that you can trust the ones i've already named the ones are always 99 percent of the time spot on about what they're talking about and uh, and yeah that's that's where i'd recommend yourself going for information so there you go um <laughs> yeah 99 of transfer news is clickbait uh i mean yeah i might be a hi- it might be a little bit hyperbolic <laughs> to be fair to say 99 percent of news coming out of, of a source is, is going to be true because you know it's it's how it's talked about yes john uh one million for match is indeed very cheap uh false manager says 80 million for tammy sonogo i think that's very harsh false manager and ramsdale is laughable if we sell lacquer and leno for cheap and buy them i will have to become a neutral for my sanity uh i'm not surprised that you'd be frustrated to see arsenal spend that amount of money on those two players i don't think 80 million is a you know it's a fair price for either of those two players but uh it's a crazy world that we're living in right now, and uh, the price of English talent is exceptionally high. James Rowe says, do you think Premier League clubs are reluctant to spend in case of capacity reductions later in the season? There's always that kind of pre-planning feel about this season and almost an element of the unknown, not knowing if the pandemic is going to rear its head and affect the sport even more than it already has done. We've already seen the uh, the Florida tour get cancelled, which obviously would have brought in a, a fair chunk of revenue for the club during that period. You do get paid for playing in these pre-season tournaments. So that was a bit of a shame for Arsenal's standpoint. So they've always got to prepare for that kind of thing. But... From the way that Arsenal are going about their business, from the levels of money that we're talking about, I have a feeling that maybe some loans have, have gone on behind the scenes. And I'm not talking about the, the, the pandemic loan that we had earlier on in the season for that £120 million. That's all paid back and refinanced. Um, but the situation is that you can still see clubs borrowing money to try and buy in the transfer market. And we know that we haven't got an owner that invests. And because of that, it does ultimately mean, of course, that Arsenal are going to have to find the money for transfers from elsewhere. And that could come in the form of a loan that is not going to be made public, I would imagine. Wilson says, why are the other teams are not interested in Basuma other than Arsenal? It's a good question because we have, I mean, we, we were kind of told about interest from Liverpool, Manchester City were interested, but there's been no push. There's been absolutely no kind of protracted chase of Basuma by any of the clubs in the Premier League. And he looks very kind of safe and stable at Brighton at this moment in time. He doesn't look like he's going anywhere else. And so it's, I don't, I can't tell you why because he's a good player. But what I can tell you is that you are 100% spot on in your assumption that there is currently no really active chase by any club for Basuma right at this moment in time, which makes it even more frustrating that Arsenal aren't pushing to get that deal done. Uh, Amandeep says, Tom, Leon Bailey is available. I know he's a winger, but surely no harm in going for him. Yeah, Aston Villa are currently chasing a £30 million swoop for Leon Bailey. I have my reservations about Bailey, um, about if he would be the right man for Arsenal. I just don't think we need him, to be honest. Right winger, can play left wing, of course, as well. Uh, I mean, you say right winger, you can affect him, just call him a winger. Is that a deft on both sides? But I think for me, we have the options. We have Pepe, we have Saka, we have Martinelli. Bamian can play there too. Smith Rowe can play in a wide area. We don't need a winger. And it's not worth just throwing 30 million down on a player just because they're available. So I think for me, we've got better players than Bailey here and let you know, let Aston Villa have them. It would be a good move for them, by the way, if they were to get him. You've got them Buendia at 10, Bailey and Grealish. Uh, or you can put Grealish at 10, Buendia on the right, 
Bailey on the left and then play Ollie Watkins, of course, up top. It's a really good squad they're building, Villa, and you shouldn't take them lightly. They will be a force again next season. I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, Alan says, striker is not priority in this window. Lacquer, good link-up play, good rapport with the young players, good conversion rate. He is underrated. He didn't get much chances at, uh, as Alba last season. What do you think? As I've said before, Alan, I think that ultimately a one-year extension is probably the right move for Lacazette. Whether that happens or not is going to be down to the player who holds all of the control in this situation. But yeah, it's it's going to be tricky to, to sort the Lacazette situation out, which benefits Arsenal. I don't either think a sale, I don't think you're going to get enough that's going to make it worth it. And I don't think you'd be able to get the replacement in that would make it worth it for that side of things to be good. And I don't think that a one-year extension is re not necessarily realistic, but I think it would be a surprise to see him sign a one-year extension still. That would still be the route I would go down, but I think it would be tough to kind of get that agreement. Uh, Shay Lendra says, I don't think Arsenal will buy any right back. Of course, uh, we've got Chambers, we've got Cedric, and of course, White can play there as well. Uh, if Xhaka will not leave, then no central midfielder will come in after Emil Smith-Rowe signed a new contract with the number 10. That's why that we're not going to get any cam. I can only see one signing, and that's goalkeeper. If that turns out to be the case, Shay Lendra, then... I'd be very critical of the management considering how much we need to do and how much we clearly have wanted to do. We signed up, well, we were looking to sign up, obviously, uh, Emi Buendia, and that's now taken a bit of a turn. We're not seeing that move coming forward. We're not seeing it happen at any time soon. Um, in regards to kind of a, an attacking midfielder, of course, Buendia's already gone off to, to Aston Villa, but we're not seeing that attacking midfielder really linked. The Erdogan story has re-emerged as a possible thing, but even then, I'm not sure that it's a, re <clears throat> a realistic kind of view at bringing one in in the next couple of weeks or so because there's just uh, there's just not enough time to get that stuff done. It's just as simple as that for me. Uh, Jasmos says, any news on our next behind closed doors friendly? Uh, need to fill my weekly Willian watching quota. Um, I think I think the next one could be tomorrow um, because there's supposedly a link that we might be playing Watford. Harry Simeu did reveal that the other day on Twitter. I don't know if that's been confirmed. We'll have to wait until tomorrow. We only found out about the Millwall game on the actual day. So we'll have to wait and see if there is indeed any kind of news to uh, to bring forward about those. But uh, I would be surprised if we didn't play a pre-season friendly before the uh, the Chelsea and the, uh, and the Spurs game. So I think we'd be surprised not to see that happen. Um, Jacobus says, Tom, what's your stance on the Ramsdale saga given Arsenal want a homegrown player? I think if you're going to go and pay 20 odd million quid, 20 to 30 million pound for Ramsdale, why not just go and get Sam Johnston? Cheaper, just as good. England international, I think I'll go and get him. I think that's probably the most sensible option for us today um it's fly who's one of our brand new members by the way so give him a big welcome in the chat book says tom do you think arteta's transfer gambles will pay off and he is still uh arsenal's manager by christmas it's impossible to say isn't it i can say that i think that there's a, a good chance that maybe we see some more transfers come in but how can i i can't tell you that i think that ultimately arteta is still going to be here by Christmas because anything could happen this season. It's an impossible question to answer, unfortunately. I know a lot of people would like to see him stay and a lot of people would have liked to have seen him go. So it's a split fan base still, but we will wait and see and hopefully everyone can get behind him. Uh, SJ says, uh, do you see Arsenal selling a few players this week? Possible players that could go? Um... I'm trying to think of anyone that could be close to a departure. I don't see Lacazette leaving this week. I don't see Willock leaving this week. I don't see Bellerin, maybe, is the, is the only one. Granite Xhaka, of course, is, is, is another obvious one. But there's no movement on either of those two fronts right now. So the likelihood is, is very low on, on any of those guys leaving. Nelson, no links other than Olympiacos and interest from some Premier League clubs. It's not turned into any kind of bid or talk. Nketiah, still no closer to leaving. Willian, still no closer to leaving. Torreira, still no closer to leaving. So I'd love to say that I can see them going, but Bellerin and Jack are probably the only ones. And that's it. And that's a real shame because we should really be doing um, we should really be doing more than, than we currently are. But it's near impossible to try and sell players in this current market that are just as, with the lack of a better word, as I was going to say bad, they're not all bad, but you know, 
that is a, a pretty generic way of putting it in comparison to kind of level of players that we need. And it's it's tricky to sell the players that you need to get money for when they're just not rated by by those players, by those clubs across Europe. And if they are, they don't have the money to spend on those players. That makes it really, really difficult. Daniel Roberts says, morning, Tom. Can you sort this Ben White Varane debate? Yeah, Daniel, let's 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 talk about this briefly. You've probably seen a lot of Arsenal fans, a lot of Man United fans. Believe it or not, they're antagonising each other. You would never believe that, would you? I don't get... Varane's a good signing for Manchester United. Ben White is a good signing for Arsenal. Why on earth do we need to compare the two? Why on earth do we need to say that one's better than the other? It's a silly argument. It's a waste of time. <laughs> Just appreciate them for what they are. Varane's come in for 42 million quid on after he was a one-year deal on big wages, but he's an established, world-class defender. Ben White cost a little bit more. He's homegrown. He's young. He's not established fully in the Premier League, but has obviously played and got experience at the top level and could be an amazing sign of his potential. Appreciate them both for what they are. Don't engage in any antagonising Manchester United fans and enjoy your day. It's as simple as that for me. Chris P says, if Watford, uh, thanks for the donation, by the way, Chris says, if Watford, then we'll get uh, the Foz GoPro angle. Yes, uh, <laughs> Ben Foster's uh, YouTube channel is excellent. And I was listening to his podcast the other day. Um, that was quite, I've, I genuinely just found his channel very recently. I don't know how I missed it, but I somehow did. And it's, uh, for me, it's, you know, it's it's a great bit of uh, insight into the game of football, and I love the fact that there's a goalkeeper trying to. It's a shame that he's so old. Apologies, Ben. Um, <laughs> it's a shame that you're reaching the end of kind of your career because it's a, it would have been a great thing to do, uh, and maybe some other players will take it up. I think goalkeeper's perfect because obviously you've got that static position. You know where they are on the pitch all the time. It wouldn't be necessarily breaking any kind of advertising laws. I'll be interested to see how it goes in the Premier League this season. Um, but yeah. Well up for for players doing, especially goalkeepers doing that kind of thing. You imagine Bert Leno with that; he get well nervous anyway as it is trying to distribute the ball out. But Leno with a GoPro behind him in the goal. But yeah, I, I wish more players would do that. I love getting an insight into the day to day kind of ongoings at clubs, not just in England but across Europe. So the more the better, definitely. You can tell though if one of our players started doing a vlog like Ben Foster, you know that there would be some miserable Arsenal fans that would not be happy. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd love it, absolutely. Uh, Sarvik says, do we think that we'll buy out Kalasanac's contract? Um, still a lot of money because obviously he's on a hundred plus thousand pounds per week. So you're looking at at least five million to buy out his final year. I feel like there'll be a sale at the end of the, at the end of the window. He'll be one of those players that's available. A club will desperately be looking out for a left back and, and they'll sign him. I think that's pretty much um, what it is. So there you go. Uh, Wilson says, do you think Onana is an ideal replacement for Leno? I mean, ideal depends upon how keen Arsenal are on signing a homegrown goalkeeper. If, if they desperately want a homegrown goalkeeper, then yeah, it's it's not the best option because obviously he's Cameroonian and he's an international for them and he obviously will be going off to play in the African Cup of Nations this uh, in the new year. So all of those factors in that scenario. But if you want an upgrade on Leno, I think Onana is an upgrade on, on Leno, specifically in regards to kind of the distribution of, of Onana. It's better than Leno's. So that area of his game is stronger. He's not as weak in the air as some people have said from watching him on his last few games. Obviously, he has a quite a big of a, he's had a big break since his ban, but his, his catching is not as bad as I thought it was. Maybe that's something that when he was younger and he's now improved upon. His distribution is great. His saves are great. He's a good goalkeeper. So I would have liked to have seen Onana come in and, and Arsenal target him, but they clearly want a homegrown stopper. And, uh, and they're expensive. So there you go. Uh, thanks, George. If you everyone could like the vid, we'd be much appreciative of that. Salim says, any news on Renato Sanchez? I think we should focus on him if Leo are willing to sell. There's no specific news, Salim, on Renato Sanchez. I'm personally not the biggest fan. I don't think it would be as smart of a signing as, as some people may think. He's got huge injury problems, and I don't think he does enough in regards to creation and defensive side of his game. He's very good on the ball, great technically, really good dribbler, really good at like, kind of progressing the ball when in possession. But I think he lacks certain area of his game that we would need. And he misses 10 plus games a season on average at the moment. So it's, it's just too much of a risk for me to go and spend that amount of money on Renato Sanchez. Uh, MFB says, uh, Tom, if we only have one player coming in, who would you take and why one player? I mean, does that count Ben White? Because we haven't actually technically signed him yet. One player. Wow. You have to identify what you think the 
most important position is. I mean, you could arguably say it's backup goalkeeper. Now we're letting Runnison go, and if we haven't signed a backup for him, um, Matt Ryan never came back. <laughs> backup goalkeeper is really important, but I feel like central midfield is the most important. If it was, if I can guarantee it, it would be Locatelli. But uh, again, I'm I'm not confident that that deal would happen. But if I was to bring in anyone that's realistic that we've been linked to, it probably would be Locatelli of all of the options. Um, can you do a breakdown on Mert Mulder? I've already done one, mate. There's already one on the channel. If you go and type in Mert Mulder tactical breakdown, it's there. It's on the channel. So uh, I'm way ahead of you. Jasha says, Tom, whose transfer business have you rated during the transfer window? Name your top three. Um, who have I rated? in the transfer window. I'm trying to think across Europe now as well of, of clubs that have done some decent deals. RB Leipzig have done some decent deals. Obviously, they brought in Gvardiol, the young Croatian left-back that played quite well in the European Championships. Um, they've brought in Andre Silva as well, another very decent player from, from Frankfurt. It's a bit of a surprise. That really replaces the loss of Timo Werner from a year ago. Leicester have done some really good business. Pat Sandaka, Samara. Uh, Brighton have brought in Enoch and Wepu, but they look like they could be bringing in Mark Kukurea. They also look like they could be bringing in uh, Odson Eduard. So they could be looking to be having done some really good business as well. You've obviously got Manchester United that brought in Jaden Sancho. It looks like they're going to bring Rafa Varane. They could be looking at bringing in Kieran Trippier as well. So they could be looking to do some very decent business as well. But if Chelsea go and get Erling Haaland, there's pretty much no one that can knock that out of the park. That would be... That would no matter who you've signed, whether you sign ten players, Erling Haaland is just the 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 key, really. Um, Man City could get Grealish and Kane, which would obviously push them up. PSG have done some really good business. Junior Wijnaldum's Naldum's Ashraf, uh, Ashraf Hakimi has come in, of course, too. Barcelona weirdly have done some very good free signings. Like you look at em uh, Emerson's not free; he's one of the ones that cost a little small transfer fee. Depay, Aguero, Eric Garcia, like they, they have done well in getting in those free deals, and they nearly got Vinaldum as well. And they've already obviously brought in Pedri last summer as well, so they've done some good business. Uh, Guy Fawkes says Marseille. Marseille have signed quite a few players: Jason, Saliba, Genduzi. Uh, they've brought in a fair few. I think they've signed some more that I can't remember off the top of my head. So uh, Nice have done some decent business. Uh, Calvin Stengs has come in as well. They're looking at another winger. Uh, they brought in Justin Kluivert as well from Leipzig too. I think he was Leipzig. Leipzig or Roma. We might have been on loan at Leipzig last season. So yeah, Nice have done some decent business as well. Um, but I'm trying to think of anyone else that's really stood out to me. I mean, Atletico Madrid getting in Rodrigo de Paula is a great signing for them. Really good. They could, uh, could end up getting uh, Griezmann back. So that's some good business for them. Uh, so yeah, Crystal Palace. Yeah, Benji, great suggestion. Uh, I mean, Michael Elise has come in. Joachim Anderson looks like he's going there as well. Really good signings. Um, and they needed it because they lost so many players because of the contract expiration. So they desperately needed some really good ones. Villa signing Emi Buendia is a good bit of business for them. They look like they want to go. They were linked with James Ward-Prowse. That's gone quite quiet. And now they're being linked with Leon Bailey as well. So, uh, yeah, some really good business been going on throughout the market. Plenty of fancy football options for you guys to look at too. So uh, we'll see how some of those play out. Borussia Dortmund have replaced... Sancho quite well too with uh, Daniel Marlin, formerly of Arsenal, of course, going there. So there's some interesting moves taking place across the entirety of Europe so far. Uh, SJ says, uh, do you believe that Arsenal will buy a Madison? I'd give it a 2 out of 10, uh, SJ, in regards to likelihood. 2 out of 10 that I think it'll happen. I'd be utterly, utterly shocked if Arsenal went and got James Madison. It just... <laughs> Absolutely unreal signing if it did happen, but I just just can't see it. Uh, Abdul, thank you for joining in from Twitter, mate. It says, do you think coach uh, good coaching, a few signings, and no European football will make us qualify for the top four? Abdul, the only thing that's going to make us qualify for top four is consistency and a removal of mistakes in combination with some decent signings to improve the squad. It's good coaching, obviously. I feel like there's we have good defensive coaching. I feel like we need to improve on the kind of attacking side of things. Um, no European football is a factor, but consistency is always key. You need to build up momentum. You need to build up a, a strong run of games, playing a style of football that's going to push you towards your targets. And if without that, I just don't think we can do it. Uh, Chapsky says, do you think Spurs will finish above Arsenal this season? Uh, I'd be surprised. Um, I feel like Spurs may struggle under Nuno this year. I might be proved wrong. I hope not. 
but I just don't think they've appointed the right manager. I think if they didn't like Mourinho's style, they're not going to like Nuno's style. That's that's for sure. Uh, Guna Studio says, chances of signing Awar. Again, I said before, like Madison, I'd be shocked if we get Awar. I just don't see it happening. I, I just don't see it happening, personally. Maybe towards the end of the window, if he's still available, Arsenal may jump ship on any of their other targets and go for Awar. But... No, I just don't see it happening. Uh, Joachim Pearson says, uh, Diego Simeone wanted the pair of Torreira with Partey if uh, Torreira is willing to stay. It could be an interesting pairing. Gives Lukonga time to grow. I just don't think Torreira wants to stay and I don't think Arteta wants him to stay either. So I just don't think that's an, a realistic outcome at the moment. Anyway, we are going to wrap things up there. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in as always. And as per, if you would like to indeed give us a vote over at the Football Content Awards, you can go and tweet. I am voting for at the Good and Talk TV in at the underscore FCAs for hashtag best club creator. You can also go vote on their website. All the information for that is, of course, in the description. Join us a little bit later on today as well, because I said before, we will be doing a tactical breakdown on Machoy Jallo and seeing what he's like as a player. And maybe he's someone that Arsenal have identified as a real star for the future. If you have enjoyed today's show, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new i'll see you a bit later oh also later on today is the return of the arsenal transfer podcast i'm going to be joined by three of my members as i said if you want to help support the channel you get the opportunity to actually come on the show as well and have a chat i'm going to be joined by three of our uh, discord members kian pablo and Vinny are all coming on this afternoon around 5 p.m uk time so i'm looking forward to giving you guys that content see you guys very very soon and as always up the arsenal